Portland, right? Portland is one of the areas in the U.S. that turnkey companies market to the most, right? Portland, all of California, New York, these types of areas, Seattle, right? These areas, these are where all the turnkey providers are spending their money. They're spending their money because these are the types of buyers that want to buy their product. Why? Well, what do these markets all have in common? Super, super high prices, right? That's one. Denver's another one. Super high prices, okay? Super high prices in Portland. What else do they got? Landlord-tenant laws, right? Some areas, they're like this. They're even. Some areas, the landlords, they're doing really well. Some areas, like those, woo, the tenants are doing really well. It makes it really hard to run a business, right? So Portland is one of the most attractive places for turnkey providers to find clients because their deals always look amazing to you folks out there in Portland, right? Like today, I got a house that's like 160K, but sometimes I sell houses that are 50K. And you're in Portland, you fall out of your chair when you see a house for 50K. You can't find no 50K houses in Portland. Then I tell you it's a red state, and you're like, God damn, where do I sign up? Woo! I have no idea. No idea why my Portland accent there is represented by like a cowboy. I don't know why that happened. It just did. It just came out of me. Anyway, that's what we're doing. That's what we're talking about today, right? We're talking about people in Portland buying out of state. And we're talking about all the turnkey providers marketing to you guys because you guys are easy pickings. And that's the thing. That's what I really want to get into today, right? How do we make sure you don't overpay? Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. My name is James Wise. As previously mentioned, today's show it's all about my homies in Portland, right? Specifically, my dude, Elliot. How do we make sure you don't overpay, Elliot? How do we make sure you get the right property, right? Turnkey providers, they're marketing to you. They don't really care what you want. They want to sell you what they got. Am I right? Why wouldn't they? That's their job. Traditional turnkey, folks. I buy a property. I fix up the property. I sell my property to you, and then I handle property management. Holton Wise, do it a little differently. You hire me to be your advocate to make sure you get the deal that works for you. And the deals I show you are not my personal houses. I have many. They are not my personal listings. I have many. I've sold $200 million worth of this stuff. I go out there in the open market. The MLS. That's why the name of the show is the MLS Search and Analysis Show. Ding! I go out there and I find deals that make sense for you. We work together as a long-term process. I'm your advocate. I work for you and you alone, not the sellers, right? With turnkey, again, I'm not, like, knocking it, but, like, if I have a turnkey house and I sell it to you, every dollar you get off the price, it's a dollar that comes out of my pocket. Well, I'm not fucking giving you my money, Elliot. That's not how this fucking works. But you can pay me to try to get somebody else's money into your pocket, and that's what you've done. And what we've been looking at so far, Elliot, is a lot of low-cost stuff, right? You told me you're interested in C and B properties, and then you gave me your budget. Here's the deal. I've been sending you some C-grade properties, uh, but you also wanted to see B-grade properties. So I got a nice B-grade property for you. It's going to be a lot more expensive than them C-grade properties. But part of my job, as I work with you, Elliot, is to teach you this market, right? All the properties in the uh, in the Cleveland market are going to seem cheap to you because you're in freaking Portland. As we already discussed, Portland's expensive, right? So you need to see what a C-grade property looks like, what it's going to cost you, how it's going to operate. Now, switch gears because you've asked me about B. I'm going to show you one of those. Let's go. Two, please. No, I think it'll 
welcome back. This, this is what you pay for, right? This is the part of the show where I earn my keep, okay? I got to present to you the numbers, the numero unos, all right? I like this house. This is B, B, B-grade stuff, okay? Now, we're in the Cleveland market, right? This is a suburb called O'Leary. It's about 30 minutes west of Cleveland, okay? This is a solid 1976 B-grade duplex, right? You guys, you read the ultimate guide to grading, grading Cleveland neighborhoods that I wrote, right? If you never heard of that, it's in the show notes below. Click it when you're done with the video. But not now! Don't screw up my watch time on the algorithm. I will get pissed! But when you're done, when you're done, right, check that out, and you'll see I graded everything on an A to F scale. This is a B. This is what a B-class neighborhood is going to look like, folks. A lot of owner-occupants are driving up pricing in these neighborhoods. You're going to get very, very stable tenants. As you can see, this is the vacant unit I'm cruising through. It's dated, but that's okay because we're going to fix it. That's where the bottom unit is, right? We're going to fix up the unit. My team will handle all the on-the-ground work. Man, look at this driveway. That's huge. That backyard right up to the woods there. That's very nice, right? Now, we're going to handle the renovations, right? We're going to make this house up to date, right? We're not going to get top dollar in rent with our kitchen looking like this, dude. Where is it? It came right out of the 70s. We've got to upgrade this a little bit. But we don't have to redo the cabinets, though. We're just going to repaint them, and we're going to slap a new countertop on there bring it up into the 21st century or 22nd century or wherever the hell we are it's probably the same century maybe it's not because it's 2022 and this was 76 so that was technically a century moral of the story we can't have it looking like your grandma's house because people ain't gonna pay top dollar rent but my team we handle all that so you don't have to live locally we take care of that right so simple right about 15 G's. We're going to put about 15 G's into this. And as you see there, I got a purchase price of 160 k That's what I think you're going to need to pay for this, right? As you see here, they got it listed at 179.9. My job as your advocate is to fight for you and get you that $20,000 discount. So I believe I can do so, right? Sold $200 million worth of the stuff. I know how to negotiate a real estate deal, folks. I believe I can put this together for you for 160 put 15k in reno to get that unit up to snuff right we're going to redo that kitchen okay we're going to use some extra money a little paint a little bit of this a little bit of that you will get a full line by line construction bid from holton weiss contracting when the time is appropriate more information on when that will be is in the fact on holtonweiss.com right so an all-in investment of 175 what are you going to get with that well the unit I just talked about fixing up, we're going to rent that bad boy for 900 a month. Now, the basement unit is currently marketed, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, not marketed, below market rented. It's rented, but below market rate is what I'm trying to say, stumbling over my words. Those current tenants are paying six and a quarter. Eventually, we'll want to work them up because if they're going to live in this nice of a neighborhood, they should really be paying 800 Now, if you're wondering, same amount of bedrooms, why is the upstairs paying $100 more? Because it's the freaking upstairs. That's why. Of course you're going to pay more. It's a bigger unit. It's above ground. The other one's a garden unit. Garden is a fancy real estate term for saying it's in the fucking basement. Obviously, they're going to pay less. But 800 is still quite a bit for this market, right? So 17 hundo, 20400 for the year. If you're new to real estate, uh, you may not know this, but you don't get to keep all that twenty k, right? That's not practical. This chart, that shows you what's practical, right? These are the fixed and variable expense estimates that come along with being a real estate investor, right? If you're in a nice neighborhood like this, yeah, you don't really deal with a lot of evictions, but we got a plan for it because no investment will ever run perfectly forever. Same thing with taxes, CapEx, insurance, water, sewer, the whole shebang. It's all right there. As you can see, I believe your pure profit will be about 9 Gs a year. With your $175,000 investment, remember, that's me fighting for you as your advocate. So you get this $179 down to $160. Then my team handling that entire renovation for you, all in $175. You put down $65. That's going to represent forty grand as a down payment, fifteen grand for the reno. The bank will kick in the rest. 30-year note, 120K mortgage. Should all pencil out to a 5% cash-on-cash cash return. That cash-on-cash cash return does not account for your actual 
uh, internal rate of return when you sell it down the road, which is going to also factor in things like principal pay down and appreciation because a very, very nice neighborhood like this, okay, what happens to real estate over time if it's nice? It goes up, right? That's like kind of how the whole friggin' shebang works. Now, truth be told, though, Cleveland itself is not historically a cash flow uh, well, I should say it's historically a cash flow market. People come here for the cash flow. They don't historically come here for the appreciation. However, nice little area like this should still see some appreciation, and then you get that nice little cash flow, and you're going to own the property and have a very, very easy ownership experience, right? Do we have properties in the Cleveland market that are much cheaper than this? Absolutely. We can do like $1,500 a month for $100,000 duplexes. But you have to understand, you're going down in asset class, and now you're not getting 1976 properties that look like that. You're getting properties built in like the 20s. We can do that. We do that with a lot of stuff. Most of my personal portfolio is a lot of that lower income Section 8 type stuff. But what I think the biggest thing a lot of you need to think about is diversification, folks. If you're going to have a large portfolio, you shouldn't have all your eggs in one basket, right? You want to take some of your higher risk stuff and balance it out with super low, li uh, low risk plays like this. Let me know what you want to do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.